Now we'll talk about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is kind of the, the paradigmatic example throughout history, I think, of kind of this mental disorder, this, this notion of uh, somebody who really has a significant breakdown in, in the normal cognitive function. And this is really associated with these positive symptoms. Uh, and in particular, this idea that uh, schizophrenics experience these hallucinations. And uh, the reason these are called positive symptoms is not because they're kind of, you know, beneficial, but rather because they're not, there's something that's not present in, in kind of neurotypical people. You know, much is made of that. Uh, they do exist, uh, these, these hallucinations and delusions. But in fact, the, the much more kind of uh, significant and, um, and impactful aspect of schizophrenia are these negative symptoms, which are essentially uh, so named because of a reduction in functionality. And these are really kind of consistent with depression, major depressive disorder, social withdrawal, social anxiety. And, and these things uh, really uh, affect, you know, kind of a constant daily life of people with schizophrenia. And uh, schizophrenia is so named because it's, it's sort of a split. So people originally thought of it as kind of like a split personality uh, but really, it's more of a division, a split between the individual and society. It turns out that it's much more uh, tied to kind of social isolation, social withdrawal, and the, the creation of a sort of alternative uh, reality, a, a, a delusional internal state, um, a fantasy world. And this is seen very clearly in these kind of network or pathway analysis of the progression of symptoms in, in the course of schizophrenia. So this is a specific example of that kind of attractor state uh, uh, pathway or network analysis uh, model that we talked about originally, where you go through this kind of progression of different major symptoms and, and that kind of sucks you into this final uh, attractor state. So we can see here, you start out in it on the left and kind of progress to the right over time. And the initial kind of symptom that, that's traced back to uh, prior to the onset of kind of first episode, kind of first break type of uh, events that happen over here is social anxiety. Okay. And this really is this indication that uh, the kind of initial causal factor here in schizophrenia is social withdrawal. Uh, you get this kind of active isolation is the next uh, symptom uh, that's producing, uh, then leading to a cluster of different kinds of outcomes, including kind of suspiciousness, hostility, um, a kind of egocentrism. Uh, so kind of, you know, this, this real kind of withdrawal from social interaction and kind of a focus on the self. Um, and hostility towards others. Uh, you get here alienation, uh, apathy, and cognitive derailment. So kind of a uh, cluster of symptoms that, again, are kind of lowering the cognitive control, uh, reduction in positive affect. Um, and then uh, you here start to develop fantasy world set of symptoms as well. Um, so again, kind of creating this alternate reality based on the individual separate from society, kind of that schism, that, that division between the self and, and society. And then finally, you at the end of this kind of chain uh, network of a cascade of symptoms, you end up with these kind of perceptual aberrations, which are basically the hallucination, positive symptom kinds of things, and delusional thinking. And so creating kind of this alternate kind of universe of explanation about people out to get you and all this kind of classic kind of paranoid delusional type of uh, uh, belief systems that are characteristic of this disorder kind of emerge much later as a result of kind of this social isolation process. Now, probably there's a lot of contribution of kind of primary issues in frontal cortex and uh, other associated brain areas. And you can see here uh, a lot of differences across the brain for your schizophrenic uh, versus normal brain systems. You know, this is the kind of significance level in pink here for these differences. You do see a lot of frontal stuff, but you know, this is actually primary frontal cortex here, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, 
Um, these areas don't seem to be that different kind of at this gross uh, gray matter level between schizophrenic and, and normal neurotypical people. Uh, but you do see widespread differences uh, throughout. And so there are, uh, you know, clearly uh, important differences in the brain. Again, whether these are primary symptoms or kind of uh, consequences of the disorder is another question. Uh, there's a lot of evidence uh, we'll talk about in a second from the maternal immune activation model for uh, differences in anterior cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex, um, and uh, also strong evidence of involvement of the basal ganglia. So you do see, again, these classic control brain systems being implicated. Uh, you also have some important uh, differences in the in the hippocampus. One of the most kind of intriguing uh, ways of understanding what might be going on in schizophrenia comes from this maternal immune activation paradigm. Uh, it was seen in uh, the, the 60s. There was a rubella pandemic, and uh, the rate of schizophrenia and autism also, interestingly, um, from mothers who had experienced the, the, an infection uh, during a particular time period in their gestation, uh, their kids went on to develop schizophrenia at a rate of 20% uh, in this particular subpopulation compared to typically, you know, around less than a percent. Um, and so that was kind of a really noticeable difference there. Uh, and there have now been studies uh, in, in rats and monkeys showing that if you activate the immune system of the mom at a certain point in gestation, um, then you do see these long-lasting kind of side effects, uh, consequences of that, that then uh, create a predisposition towards subsequent development of schizophrenia. And interestingly, also earlier on in other subsets of, popula of the population, uh, autism, suggesting, interestingly, a connection potentially between schizophrenia and autism having this sort of common uh, etiology in terms of this MIA model. Lots of uh, potentially interesting clues as to what might be going on, uh, but also an indication that, you know, the biological side of it may be fairly generic or general and that there's a lot of uh, environmental and behavioral kind of uh, extra components uh, emerging on top of that to determine which way things go.